here we go. The world headquarters of the Lean Brothers. Really anticlimactic when you're locked out. Oh, all right, I'm in. I'm looking for the Lean Brothers. What's happening? There's one right there. <laughs> So I'm standing here with Tyler and we're just about to walk out there. It looks pretty awesome. It's messy today. Let's go out into the Gemba. That's what you want in a wood shop. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm lucky enough today to be standing here with one of the Lean Brothers, world famous Lean <laughs> Brothers, um, Tyler Ney, and we're at Trim Art. And I think one of the most important things we were discussing today was investing in technology and maybe Tyler can tell us a little bit about why you jump into technology the way you do because as we're about to see you really jump in with both feet. We have, we, we've jumped in, we, we love our technology and, and some of the things that we love about it is you know we, we number one we attract really good people. We love, love, love our employees, they're all fantastic. Um, and so we, we like having really good employees, but we don't have to have as, as many of them, or we're able to do a lot more with less. One thing I've enjoyed so much is the stories. Every time we turn around, we're standing beside another machine with another story. You wanna run around and just give everybody else the same stories I got today? Let's go. Let's do it. Here in front of this monster piece of equipment that looks like it takes up, I, I don't know, it looks like 10,000 square feet to me, but tell us how this saves you space. Sure. So this is an Intello store, it is a material handling system. And so inside the store, we have bunks of material spread out. The reason we like this is, there, there's kind of two main reasons. Number one, we got rid of so many forklift lanes. We used to have racking all over the shop, then you have to have forklift lanes to get the material. We'd end up with material in small stacks, and those small stacks, material would get lost. Mm -hmm. And so by having the Intello store, we know what we have. We know when we bought it, we know what it is. And so that, that was a huge thing. The other thing is automation. It not only will store and knows where our material is, but it'll also load the machine. So we have three machines it'll load. It'll load, um, we have two different CNC's that it'll load, uh, as well as our beam saw. And, so and when I, I gotta admit, when I first was looking at it, I was like, well, I don't, that looks like a lot of money to me and you know the, the price tag of things. But then you start doing the math and I was watching this thing run around all day just, you know, in the background doing its thing. And I'm like, if that was my factory, there would be a human being attached to every single one of those sheets, moving around the shop, loading, lifting, picking up your back, your, like it, it never ends. And so since you've challenged me and said, do you think that this will save you space? My wheels are spinning and I think I'm gonna have to get one of these pretty soon. All right, yeah. let's go check out another one. I don't think anyone's gonna believe us. This actually isn't a, a Styles commercial, but, <laughs> but, but it sure seems that way. There's a lot of it in here for good reason. Yeah. Tell, us about, tell us about this router. Okay, so we're standing in front of our N500. So we have two N300s behind this, and then this is the N500. What I love about this machine is it's got a little different capabilities and capacity than the other two machines. So if we look behind this, I don't know if you can see, but it's got two tool changers, 28 tools, in this which is really nice because so it's able to do a lot of things without us interacting with it a lot let's show my guys the video when they see two tool changes on your machine they're gonna be like brad <laughs> why are we changing tools <laughs> all right next all right this is this is my this is probably my all-time favorite story about this edge bander that i got today so tell us how did you end up with the world's biggest edge bander it is big we were in our other facility when we bought this but we, our first edge bander, we absolutely loved. It was a little teeny baby one, didn't have any corner rounding, but we put miles and miles and miles through that thing. It was easy to maintain, easy to set up. We loved it, but we just needed a little more capacity. And at the time we're just like, ah, it's a lot of money to buy a new edge bander. And so we found a used one for almost half of what a new, pretty much half what a new one was. And so we said, well, let, let's do this. It's not super old. Well, that was one of the biggest mistakes we've ever made. It, it constantly maintaining it. I think we figured we spent about $30,000 maintaining that over the, the three or four years we had it. And so 
we told ourselves, number one, we will never again buy a used edge bander because we take care of our equipment, but a lot of people don't. So, and then number two, we're like, we want to make sure we buy an edge bander that's going to last. So we settled on this 2520, which honestly we had no business buying at the time. <laughs> None. Like it was way overkill. We probably should have bought a bander that was half the cost, but we thought, you know what? It's, it's going to last and we know it will. You know, here we are seven years later. It's, it's still running great. In the Isn't time, that so. something that I don't think you could ever get around that you get what you pay for? That, Absolutely. that saying just applies. And when I was here looking at this today, I was opening it all up and I was like, wow, this is, I thought it was brand new. I thought like if you told me you bought this this year, I would have been like, oh yeah, you did. But it, I, I was surprised to discover it's seven years old. If we looked in the cabinet, I mean, it's obvious you're, you're taking good care of it, but just to see it seven years later, that was my favorite line. I had no business buying this, but we did anyway. Yeah, money well spent. Nice. All right. Well, I'm sure there's more. Let's go. Well, we're standing in front of a machine that's near and dear to my heart for sure. Um, but nevertheless, t tell us about Cosmo, what made you take the leap? And um, we've seen your shop and I heard something really funny the other day. Someone said, well, I'm not sure. Maybe your Sanders just for small shops. And I think we've blown that one out of the water now. <laughs> so, so thank you for that. Um, but tell us, what made you take the leap on a, on a robotic sanding solution? So... Whenever we buy a piece of equipment, really, I don't, I'm, I don't go with the accounting mentality. Oh, we only have so much to spend on capital expenditures, and I think that's what a lot of people do. We look at it as as labor and help for our guys, mm -hmm. and so, as when we run our doors, you know, whether it's veneer doors, whether it's MDF doors, whatever it is, they're coming off of Larry here, and our guys are sanding them and prepping them and getting them ready for finish. And so we looked at it and we said, hey, they're not keeping up with the CNC, so we need to do one of two things. We either need to hire a person or we need to hire a machine. Mm. And so, you know, typically... What a good yeah. hire a machine. That changes the way you look at spending that money. It oh does. My God. It totally changes it because you, you still have the expense regardless, right? And so what makes the most sense? And obviously we talked to our people and... We told them, hey, we're looking at this, and they got super excited. And it's like, so now we can take this, we can run doors, we can pull them off the machine, put them on Cosmo, and we're, we're beating the CNC now. Whereas before the CNC was beating our operator. And now we're getting great doors, but we just needed, we needed another person to help them keep up. So we hired Cosmo. Amazing. I, I, I'm going to use that line forever, hire a machine. Because we always think when we're thinking that, we think of buying something and then we get hung up on the price of something versus the cost of hiring someone to do that. Like Henry Ford said, if you need a machine and don't buy it, you will soon find you have paid for it and don't have it. Very true. Very <laughs> All true. right. Next. Tell us about the shoebox. So the shoebox is... It's an infrared drying room, really. Just put our pieces in. Typically, we run them through either our, our hand booth or our paint line. We let them flash for five minutes. We put them in the shoe box. Depending if we're gonna if we're gonna spray the same side, ten minutes. Really? We spray again. Back. So for our lean fans, this is uh, this is ability to reduce batch sizes in Absolutely. a pretty big way. Yeah, and it's 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 increased our throughput substantially. Of everything that I bought for painting, and, and we have a lot of pumps, we have the paint line, you know, we, we have a lot of things. This by far is, I would call it, the most lean machine, wow. you know, for finishing. And what's the biggest bottleneck in a wood shop? Waiting for things to dry. Yep. Finishing. It's finishing. So, so the, the shoe box has been incredible. And I know they, this was... Um, the, well, it was one of the early ones brought into the U.S. Do they, you know what's so funny? So well. I noticed this common thread amongst all your stories. You're like, well, that machine, oh, this one was the first one in the U.S. And then my other machine was the first one in the U.S. So if you're getting the feeling like Ty Tyler jumps in on technology, <laughs> Maybe a little fast, there, but there it's is no doubt. <laughs> well, but I mean, and that's, that's just it, right? Everybody else is sitting around wondering, oh, should I do it? And you're like, I did it, and I'm reaping the benefits while you guys are still thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Haste makes waste. All right. 
So where, where do you, let's go through the, this giant sucker here. And paint line here to do all of your flat parts. What inspired you to make the leap into getting a paint line? So everything has a story, right? <laughs> I haven't shared this one with you yet, so. I'm excited. <laughs> so um, we, we, always, we always land a contract first and then go, well, crap, how are we going to do this, right? That, that's usually how everything goes, yeah. right? In fact, before we bought our first edge bander, we, all we had was a little, like, one of those little hand ones, and we just did a few parts here and there, and then we landed this huge contract with tons and tons of edge banding. We're like, we don't have an edge bander. So we made a phone call and had an edge bander a week later. But I, I digress on this, but that's typically how things go for us. So we landed a big, a big home builder and we knew we had a lot of doors to paint. We just had a small paint shop and a, a guy across the street from us that had a cabinet shop as well had decided he wanted to go into finishing and he bought this makeover that we're standing in next to. So anyway, we're like, well, okay, great. We're gonna have you paint our doors. You, know, you got a paint line, little one man shop with this. And, and uh, anyway, so we, we started outsourcing to him. But inevitably we would always be sending guys over. We're like, he couldn't get them done fast enough. Oh, I'm not gonna be able to get to that for three or four days. And so we would just send three or four guys over and knock jobs out. <clears throat> and so one day he asked me, he says, hey, what's your plan? And I said, well, we're gonna buy one. Right. There's no other solution, really. Um, hopefully, there's another solution coming. Wink, wink. May maybe a company that I don't know anything about has a solution coming. <laughs> so this is another machine we really had no business buying, to be honest with you. We were in on, you know, our shop at the time. I don't even know if we've, we'd expanded into you know, the other sites. So I think we're in about 8,000 square feet when we bought this. So wow. we just shoehorned it in with everything else. But it worked and it, it automated things It gave us consistency. So anyway, back to the story. So, um, this guy's like, what are you going to do? And I said, I think we're going to buy one. We, we need something in order to, to get this production up. And he said, well, why don't you, why don't you just take over this one? He'd had it about a year, hardly sprayed anything through it except for our stuff. And so anyway, so we, we took over, I just took over the lease from him and we just went for it. And so, and again, we really didn't have the business, to handle these, the business at the time, we were probably using an hour a day right. because it can pump so much product through. You know, I wouldn't consider it necessarily a lean machine, right? It is a mass production machine. I consider it a little more lean now that we're bigger, but at the time it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a great flow. It was hurry up and wait. Mm -hmm. So we'd hurry up and spray, you know, you can spray a coat on an entire house in 10 minutes. Well, and then you have to wait for whatever, before we had a drive for anymore. two or three hours, <laughs> right. right? And so anyway, so that's, that's how this came about. You know, now fast forward, we've added a whole bunch of pumps. You know, we can have nine different colors or finishes loaded in it, quick change. And so we're able to, you know, no matter if we're doing clears, whites, we have black loaded in it, we can, we can do all those different colors. We've sprayed red through it, we'll do whatever. Man. And so now it's super quick, super fast, and it's been a great machine What for I'm us. loving about running around your factory you're now what 27,000 square feet correct got three routers an IntelliStore, a sanding robot two edge banders finishing systems shoe boxes we haven't even got to the custom side there's a plethora of other cool little tools like if you're not an inspiration to people i don't know what will be because you're telling a story five seconds ago about oh we used to hand edge band our doors and now we walk out there and I'm like, oh, you have a spaceship doing your edge banding now. So it's possible for everybody who's in the shop right now that is hand edge banding their doors. Look at how far you can come. You, you know, obviously you have the business acumen for it. And I recommend that be the step one. Um, get, get your business head and, and hat on well. Um, but then after that, it looks like every move that you made into technology has been able to progress you just one step further, just one step further, take on a slightly bigger job, do a better quality, and all because you have a, like, in this facility, how many people did you say you had in the shop? Right now we have 13. <laughs> You're doing with 13 people what people with 30 can't do. 
So yeah. that's that's pretty impressive. Yeah, I got to tell you, I'm I came here and my my hair is blown back. I'm just blown away. So I stand corrected when I said you had three routers. Um, as soon as the camera went off, you looked at me and said, "What do you mean? We have five. So and then and then you said, "But wait, there's another yeah. story." So we got to catch the last All story right. of Shemp. So, this is Shemp. So. Shemp is a vertical CNC, so a little different than the flat tables, but we kind of, I always do things on a whim, Brad. Weird. Yeah. So, in fact. In you know, fact, the, the beam saw you bought yeah. on auction. I know. Well, there's a story behind the other one. But but this vertical, so we, um, we were at the show. I should never go to a show, ever. Ever. Right? <laughs> and then we walked by this vertical, this exact one, actually. But then I got thinking, wait, we have this contract that has all these little small pieces. They're about three and a half inches wide, eight feet long, and they have 18 holes in them that are like two inches big. Well, I don't know if you ever tried to cut a piece that oh, is yeah. this wide, eight feet long with all these holes in them on, on a, a flat, flat table. Not they happening. move all over the yeah. place. So we were constantly redoing, we would tape down, we would just do all these things. And I'm like, I'll bet you that would do it. And I'm like, yep, so we need it. <laughs> <laughs> so we bought it and this it's a little crazy and I think sometimes people think when you buy a piece of equipment it has to run and run mm. and run to pay for itself right but we probably paid for half of this machine in one year just off of not having to do those on the flat tables anyway so this just solved this literally solved one problem and then I just started thinking hey what else can we do with it right nice. and so it doesn't stay busy all day long but it's paid for itself. Right. So after we've seen all of all of this grandiose technology, like, do you think you could be anywhere close to where you are today had you not been heavily investing in the latest and greatest technology? Not a chance. I mean, kind of like you said, there's a lot of shops that have twice as many people that we do, and they're doing the same or less uh, in revenue. You get good parts, on time, quality, you know everything there. There's just no way that we could do what we we do without without the technology. Awesome. All right. Well, it's been a blast, and I guess the only thing I have left now to do is go shopping. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> All right. Let's get out of here. Listen to the wise words in the following video. Make your move before you're ready. I'll tell you where big dreams go to die. Tell me. They go to the planning place, getting ready place. Mm preparing myself and it's the biggest con job we work on ourselves there are so many bones of big dreams in that graveyard it's always something there's always going to be a set of reasons to wait 